Ur Afrikaner Volksrat. In turn, they claim to have around 40,000 members. They said their members would take land expropriation without compensation as a declaration of war here in South Africa. Yes, strong language. But these are the words of Andries Breitenbach, who is the group's chairperson. As follows, President Jacob Zuma first mentioning the expropriation of land in his uh, opening of Parliament speech, but last week was the first time he called for a change in the law. The ANC also finds itself under pressure from, uh, well, the radical economic freedom fighters led by Julius Malema, who've been traveling the country urging black South Africans to take back land from what they termed white invaders. He told Parliament his party wanted to unite black people in South Africa to expropriate land without compensation. Now, to start off this discussion, we are joined in our Pretoria studio by the Boer Afrikaner folks, right? Andries Breitenbach. He is the group's chairperson. Mr. Breitenbach, a very good morning to you and thank you for being with us here on Newsroom. Thank you and good morning. Mr. Breitenbach, declaration of war. Very strong words that you, that you, that your organization has, has used when talking about the land issue. Just tell us what your thinking is with regards to this. Well, what we say, uh, and, and uh, I think we, we should take note, it's not us who are declaring war. The situation is that when nation, one nation or state, appropriates another people's land, it usually and inevitably results in armed conflict. Uh, since the beginning of times, it has been an accepted right of peoples to defend the integrity of their land against such infringements. Um, and one can cite uh, many examples of, of such a thing. Uh, in 1982, when Britain um, declared war on Argentine, when Argentine occupied the Falkland Islands, for instance. Later on in 1991, the Gulf War started when America stepped in to protect Kuwait against the Iraqi uh, land occupation. Now, that notwithstanding, the fact is that the ANC has repeatedly stated that the land that we, the white people, own was stolen from the black people. Um, and that is, of course, a lot of nonsense. Um, President Zuma made the same statement last year and in January last year we lodged a, a complaint at the Human Rights Commission and we challenged him to give the proof for that statement and we asked him why did he ignore the recorded history of land settlement and land occupation in South Africa. Now the uh, Human Rights Commission, they manipulated that charge, uh, that complaint, and it became to nothing up to now. The fact is that the history of land occupation in South Africa is properly document, documented over the years by our own people, by um, discoverers that crossed South Africa, uh, by missionaries, and there are many records <coughs> that can be consulted yeah. to determine exactly what happened. Now, the land that we occupy, we got in legal ways, ways that were accepted at that time. Firstly, there was a lot of land in South Africa that was not inhabited by anyone. And that land was occupied by the foot trackers. Secondly, we bought land or exchanged land or got land uh, in, uh, as compensation for favors that we did for those uh, tribal chiefs. Uh, and we even paid with goods or services yeah. for that so land. Mr. Breitenbach. And um, that is properly recorded, the records there of, uh, Mr. are still available. Mr. Breitenbach, and can then I? in a few instances. Can I ask you a question? Yes. 
Do you believe that black South Africans then yes. have no claim to land in the country? No, I definitely do not believe that. They have their historical areas where they settle when they came into South Africa. And those historical areas were recognized by the governments from the Foot Trackers time up to th and through the apartheid uh, era. Uh, and that is mainly the, the homelands, later on homelands. Uh, those are the historical settlement areas. But after that time, we also realized that um, because of the numbers, we couldn't take all of the rest of South Africa for ourselves. And therefore, in 1936, we had that uh, land law that was passed in which a lot of land that belonged to the white people at that time was also um, uh, earmarked mm. to be given to the black people. And it was bought out by the government, a lot of that, and it was handed over to the black people. So during the years, Whereas in, say, 1910, roundabout, uh, the black people occupied about 7% and the white people about 70% of the, the country. The situation has, in the meantime, changed drastically. I want to ask you, sir. The figures I uh, have uh, is I that... I have to yes. ask you because we're running out of time a little bit, so we have to kind of get to get to the story quickly. I want to ask you about the laws under apartheid and the Land Act of 1913. You believe that those laws were good and just and should be applied still today? Those laws were good and just at that, at that time. Uh, the 1913 Land Act was a measure to protect the black areas and the black land so that the white people couldn't just take those land so you uh, agree that themselves. white people took land and the white people occupied land and um, they pre that law prevented white people from entering that the land that was apportioned to the black people and uh, start occupying it for themselves or in their interest are you as an organization willing to you... discuss the the land issue with South Africans, or is your threat to go to war a non-negotiable? No, we are definitely, definitely prepared to discuss it. And I think, uh, if I can make a proposition, that the government should appoint a commission uh, consisting of historians and anthropologists, uh, a balanced commission uh, that will represent us as well as the black people and do proper investigation and research on this land issue. And then it can be determined whether we stole land as is uh, claimed by the president and other people, because we claim we never stole land. In fact, uh, we conquered land in a few cases where we, we were attacked. Conquered land? provocation. What do you mean White with conquered land, if I may ask? Well, there was war at that time. We were attacked by the Matabele and um, even by the Zulus. And we uh, waged war against the Matabele and they were chased out of the land. They went to Rhodesia. That's why they are there. Yeah. Mr. But when they came peace, Mr. some of those lesser tribes returned and they asked for the land that they occupied before that war and we gave them back that uh, land. Mr. Breitenbach, do you believe that injustice has been, has been perpetrated against black South Africans under colonialism, uh, English rule as it were, Afrikaans rule and then apartheid. Do you believe that there were injustices perpetrated against black people and that there needs to be reparation? And for black people in South Africa now, they believe that land is the only way that their dignity can be restored. I do not de deny that injustices might have occurred. 
but I believe they are minor as far as land is concerned, and injustices to us, the white people, have also been done. How do we restore the dignity of landless black people in a country with so much land? How do we restore our dignity as a Boer Afrikaner people who was uh, self-determined, we had self-determination, and now we are without uh, any substantial political uh, influence. Mr. Breitenbach, uh, that self-determination was at the expense of all the other people in South Africa. I think you have to agree with that. Uh, no, I don't agree with that, because we, but that's a, a discussion of, for another day. <laughs> the fact is that as far as land is concerned, I don't think it is uh, the right thing, and it's totally unfounded to accuse of, of us of stealing the black man's land, and now to want to take it back without compensation. In most of the cases where consolidation took place, the black people were compensated, and they were properly compensated. There are records in the archives where a previous prime minister said that because we don't want to be accused later on, the people of, of, uh, from which land was taken should be compensated with better land or more land. And that was what happened at that time. Mr. Breitenbach, I would like you to at some point forward me all of the information that you have because we'd like to make that, that public as the discussions continue. However, I want to conclude by asking you about the pronouncements of leaders like Julius Malema in South Africa. We now see what the court has ruled, but he's calling for, for black South Africans to take land back without compensation. What do you say to that? I say he's instigating war in, in South Africa and he's instigating these farm attacks by telling people that their land and their goods have been stolen. They feel justified to attack our people and these farm murders that take place are I think a direct result of those sort of statements and that kind of language that is um, uh, asserted by people like Julius Malema, but also by the president of this country, Jacob Zuma. And as long as they continue with that, they must know they create a climate of war and hostility. And the animosity between the white people and the black people is ever increasing because of those kind of uh, assertions from their side. Mr. Breitenbach, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, that is the chairperson of the Boer Afrikaner Volksrat, Mr. Andries Breitenbach. And Mr. Breitenbach says that the land issue is not such a big issue because not, land was never stolen. It was acquired by legal means. You tell us what do you think about that.